Throughout the Second World War, there were a number of acts of espionage in which spies conducted undercover work to get one up over their enemies. One of the most daring German commandos was Otto Scorzani, who during the conflict even managed to help free Benito Mussolini from captivity, with Hitler ordering the secret mission to raid his prison. Scorzani had many different roles during the war, and he was tasked by Adolf Hitler to capture a number of bridges over the Moise River during the Battle of the Bulge, which was considered Hitler's last roll of the dice. During this mission, German soldiers wore captured enemy uniforms, and they were supposed to inflict confusion with the Allies, and this mission was supposed to cause chaos within the Allied ranks. However, following this, there were a number of executions, and these were carried out by the Allied armies such as the US Army. But Scorzani escaped execution. What is the story of Operation Greif, and the executions that sought to punish those German soldiers involved in it? Join us today as we find out, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Otto Scorzani was one of Hitler's favourites, and most trusted commandos. He had kidnapped the son of Hungary's regent, and when he got back to Germany he met with Hitler inside the wolf's lair on the 22nd of October 1944. Hitler was in a buoyant mood, despite the fact the war had at this point turned very much against him. He then said he had intelligence saying that the Americans had captured German tanks, and that these with German markings on were being used in the Battle of Aachen, and Hitler wanted Scorzani to establish his own unit using captured Allied vehicles to confuse. He was given additional instructions to form a special brigade, Panzer Brigade 150, and their job was to capture one or more of the bridges over the Moise River before they were blown up. Hitler said that this needed to be accomplished very quickly, with as few losses as possible, and he said this would be done more efficiently if Scorzani's men were dressed in American army uniforms. He said that the use of disguise could help fool the enemy, and he said, I want you to command a group of American and British troops and get them across the Moisa and seize one of the bridges. Not, my dear Scorzani, real Americans or British. I want you to create special units wearing American and British uniforms. They will travel in captured Allied tanks. Think of the confusion you could cause. I envisage a whole string of false orders, which will upset communications and attack morale. But Scorzani knew that under the Hague Convention, that those of his men, who were captured using enemy uniforms, could be executed as spies, and he did have discussions with his superiors about this. Scorzani then only had six weeks to recruit and train the brand new unit for Hitler's Operation Greif. He quickly sent his plans and asked for 3,300 soldiers, and he was then given the go-ahead. The Wehrmacht wanted to use soldiers who had a good knowledge of the English language, and who knew American dialect, and this information then was passed to the Allies, and they found out about the secret group, which were aimed at disrupting. The Panzer Brigade 150 needed American vehicles, weapons and uniforms, and despite wanting 15 tanks, 20 armoured vehicles, 100 jeeps, 40 motorcycles, 120 trucks, and many British and American uniforms, the Germans fell short of these targets. The equipment was not sufficient, and two Shermans were delivered, but these were in poor condition, and Scorzani then had to use panther tanks instead, in his own armoured cars. They were given foreign equipment from the wrong armies, with Russian weapons being given to the unit, and Scorzani only had ten men who spoke good English, and more of them were clueless about the language of the Allies. It was not a good start, and Scorzani then reduced the numbers, and he gathered the best 150 English speakers into a commando unit he named Einheit Stilau. Eventually, 2,500 men were gathered, and the equipment and vehicles they were given were painted up in American markings, as best as they could. The Panther tanks were disguised as M10 tank destroyers, with modifications taking place. There were rumours that they could relieve besieged French towns, and they were given free missions. The demolition squads of five or six men were to destroy bridges, ammunition dumps and fuel stores. The recon patrols were to work on both sides of the river and pass on rubbish orders to the Americans they met, and they were then asked to remove minefield warnings and reverse road signs, causing minor havoc. The final mission was that lead units would work closely with attacking units to destroy American telephone wires and radio stations, and to issue false orders. 
Skorzeny would later recount the activities of the unit, and he said that during the first few days of attack, four recon units and two demolition groups were sent out along with three units that accompanied the 1st SS Panzer Division, the 12th SS Panzer Division, and the 12th Volksgrenadier Division. One commando team entered Malmede, and another persuaded an American unit to withdraw from Pateau in Belgium. Further teams switched road signs and sent the Americans in the wrong direction. But the Americans then began to suspect sabotage, and they suspected most people. They began to ask Americans they came across questions that they would only know the answers to, for example questions about baseball and other trivia. This suspicion led to one man being held at gunpoint for getting an answer wrong regarding the Chicago Cubs. Another captain also spent a week in a lockup as he was caught wearing German boots. The Scorsese group caused paranoia and hysteria within the Americans. In total, 44 German soldiers in American uniforms were sent through American territory. All of them but eight came back and returned, but the element of surprise had gone, and they then went back to wearing American uniforms and using stealth. The confusion caused by the mission was that the Americans began to treat anyone with suspicion, and a German commando team was captured. The Germans were caught when they gave an incorrect password, and there was a rumour going around that the Americans and Scorzani had intended to take Dwight Eisenhower captive. But those who were captured faced a very harsh death sentence, with the executions being at the hands of the Americans. The fact that the Germans were captured wearing the enemy uniforms meant they were treated in the same way as spies. German General Anton Dossler ordered the execution of some American soldiers who had been caught wearing enemy uniforms, but this was not actually the case. Dossler then had them executed based on this premise. But these were then shot on the basis that they were accused of being enemy spies. But three members of Operation Greif, named Panas, Billing and Schmidt, were taken to a military trial at Henry Chapelle on the 21st of December 1944. They were then sentenced to death for their sabotage and spy work. There were a further three Germans who were tried and were sentenced to death two days later, and seven more were tried on the 26th of December. The final three captured were tried on the 31st of December, and all those members of Scorsani's group who were captured were sentenced to death and were to be executed. The spies and soldiers were all to be executed in the same way, and they were to be shot by a firing squad with the executioners being the US First Army. Firing squads were organised, and in different areas the Americans made firing ranges, which were created to execute the saboteurs. In one execution of three German officers, there were three wooden stakes, which were made against a small concrete building. The three men were led to their stake, their execution post, and they were then tied by their feet and their arms, being tied behind their backs before they were secured to the post by a rope. They were dressed in the clothes they had been arrested in, and a marker was then secured to their chest to show the firing squad where to aim and shoot. The men were then blindfolded, and the American military policemen then stood back, as around 20 metres away there was a firing squad armed with their rifles. They were told to ready themselves, and the signal was then given by a commander, and they shot straight into their targets with accuracy, killing the German soldiers, who were involved in Scorzani's units. All of those arrested and found in American uniform were executed in the same way by firing squads like this. One of the leaders of Operation Greif, Gunter Schultz, was later executed on the 14th of June by a firing squad made up of US 9th Army men. Scorzani would be tried as a war criminal and was accused of war crimes relating to his crimes during the Battle of the Bulge and this operation. He and nine other members of the group were charged with improperly using US uniforms by entering into combat disguised therewith and treacherously firing upon and killing members of the armed forces of the United States. But the defendants were acquitted, and Scorzani managed to escape any form of punishment. He would later escape from a prison camp, and he later became a military advisor to Argentinian President Perón, who let many former Nazis settle in his lands. But the executions of the men of Operation Greif were swift and were brutal, with firing squads firing straight through the saboteurs. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.